Okay, thank you, Mr. Panish Bhakti, for coming. Um, I'd like to ask you, what does the work that UNCTAD do, how does that assist developing countries and countries of the Global South uh, in their efforts to achieve equitable trade? Uh, we actually uh, help advise countries, uh, particularly in the way that they would uh, put up their uh, trade strategy and uh, at the same time to link that uh, with other strategies that would help to promote uh, trade competitiveness, for example, in the areas of investment, uh, uh, investment that is uh, that could be mobilized from abroad, like foreign direct investment or domestic investment in areas of, of trade infrastructure to help improve competitiveness uh, in areas like agriculture, industry, services. Also, uh, at the same time, we need countries to be uh, uh, well regulated uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of competition rules. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, logistical uh, regulations, for example, custom uh, procedures. Uh, we also support countries in a way that they would like to group together in a regional, uh, in a regional uh, economic cooperation or free trade areas and things like that because we believe that uh, regional integration can help countries to uh, become more competitive, to enhance their own markets, uh, uh, make the uh, the uh, economy of scales uh, more appropriate to uh, the way they can invest in industri industries uh, and go and, and so on and so forth because we we like to think of ourselves as the uh, as a development think tank of the UN uh, in a way that uh, we uh, try to work in a in a most integrated manner because we don't think that development issues can be taken on an individual basis for example on agriculture agriculture development depends on so many other things on transportation, on water management, on trade regime and things like that. So Angta tends to adopt this kind of integrated approach when we look at development issues. Sure. Um, and in terms of the recent global economic turndown, how has that affected uh, the efforts of least developed countries and developing countries in terms of global trade? And how has Angta changed their approach to uh, advising these countries on trade? Well, you know, I mean, most of us actually have been advising countries to open up and uh, to be engaged more in, uh, in international trade because uh, uh, international trade can help to serve so many uh, beneficial purposes, for example, in transfer technology, in linking uh, countries to the markets, uh, in uh, allowing countries to specialize. So we all actually uh, has been recommending countries to, to open up, uh, to be more competitive, to trade more. But of course, uh, during the downturn, uh, the global downturns uh, between 2008 and 2009, uh, countries uh, which uh, were more open tend to be more uh, affected than those who are less open. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, countries will have to learn to adjust. So it doesn't mean that we have to go back uh, to close up our countries to be less uh, affected by global downturns because what, what we are telling the, uh, the countries is that we need to be more balanced. We still need to, uh, countries need to be able to compete. They still have to build up their competitiveness but they also have to build up the strength when it comes to the time that there may be some turbulent uh, external uh, uh, disturbances like what happened. And this is something that we, we are concerned that uh, recessions and global downturn could be recurrent uh, issues. So we advise countries to uh, also develop their own domestic market so that they can have more balanced uh, exposure to external and, and, and domestic demand. We also advise countries uh, to be doing investment uh, in their own countries, particularly in orienting themselves towards more technology oriented so that they can themselves uh, 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 be engaged in, uh, in creating more innovations, that they can create niche for markets themselves, that because of these niches you can defend your markets better. We also uh, are working on a new trade patterns which is called global value chain. The global value chain uh, during good times uh, uh, it helps to create more trade. But during bad time, global supply chain tend to uh, uh, have difficulties in adjusting because all these countries participating con together to produce certain goods. But we still believe that global supply chains, uh, when things begin to become better, those who are linked as part of the global network of supply chain or value chain, they would also tend to, to re recover also better. You look at Asia at the moment. 
Asia have not been uh, actually exposed to any financial speculations in the years 2006 and, and 7 and 8. They were badly damaged. Uh, trade flow dropped uh, tremendously. There was a recession in Asia for some countries, mainly because they were exposed to a lot of multilateral trade. But they were hit badly in 2008, but they recovered in the middle of 2009 very quickly because of the fact that they were linked as a sort of supply chain. So this actually gives them an additional strength and impetus. When, when China begins to grow, then the rest of Southeast Asia begins to grow, and so then Japan also goes up. So these are things that we have been trying to help them to, uh, uh, to try to uh, cushion themselves against some of these uh, disturbances. Another thing is what we are doing uh, is what we call the South-South Economic Cooperation, cooperation among uh, emerging countries, European countries. Uh, because this we see, because the South itself now is taken up at least, uh, I would say, one-fourth of the global export market. And at least 50% of their, of their export now uh, going to fellow South-South countries. So uh, uh, emerging countries themselves, uh, mar their markets are becoming also significant for other countries. And we see that because of the uh, uh, comparative uh, level of technology, uh, these are markets in which uh, products, uh, 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 production processes in different in, in, in these countries can actually uh, uh, present the kind of goods that could be that could be tradable. They don't need sophisticated technologies or uh, a very uh, high level of standards to be able to reach the more advanced economies market. But uh, with their intermediate technologies, they can reach each other market, and so trading volume has been expanding among yeah. South and North. Uh, uh, countries. Great. And, and with the upcoming UNCTAD 13, I know that you have a section on South-South uh, economic development or South-South right, yes, economic yes, cooperation. Yes, yes. Now, in terms of this regional cooperation that you've been speaking about and South-South cooperation, uh, increasing competitiveness, how important is ICT, and you touched on this briefly, um, but I just wanted to go back to it, how important is ICT and technologies in building up now trade rather than the heavy industrial technologies of uh, recent years? Well. Uh, ICT, of course, has helped country uh, to link up through uh, e-commerce, certainly. You don't have to move your, your, your export strategies around the world. You can, you can, you can operate it from, from your own countries, for example, now in e-tourism. Uh, in Asia, in some countries, half of the tourists going into some Asian e uh, economies uh, did not actually physically go out and book their own uh, hotels or tours and things like that. They, they, they went through the internet system, so it's, it's very helpful. We have uh, actually been uh, working a lot on mobile telephony, uh, mobile telephony application, particularly for the rural, rural areas in Asia, in Africa, to, to link rural uh, producers and farmers to the international markets. Now they get a better sources for their input for farmers. They also get better information on their prices. So this has actually uh, resolved, for example, in Bhutan, I think they're getting uh, much better uh, uh, prices for their dairy products in Bhutan. In Africa, they get better prices for their flowers, horticultural products, for example, by using uh, connection connectivity through their mobile phones. And besides that, uh, we also believe uh, we also believe that the uh, uh, the investment in uh, in ICT uh, equipments in IT equipments uh, could be a means for countries to uh, be engaged in new rounds of. Uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, investment opportunities because uh, like in Asia at the moment, uh, in Asia there are a lot of countries who do things in semiconductors, in integrated uh, 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 units for, for computers and things like so computer screens and all this part. So we also advise countries to be linked up in their, uh, again, value chain in producing uh, equipments for the IT industries. We also support uh, the trade in services which is linked to outsourcing uh, of services, which is part of the trade negotiations under the, the GATS uh, negotiations. We, we support countries uh, to be engaged in, uh, in, in areas of, uh, of outsourcing, and particularly we are supporting LDCs in particular, the least of countries, to be exempted from any services agreement uh, uh, rules uh, uh, on, on services, particularly in outsourcing.